Hey, it's Derek Hagan. I'm a financial psychology expert specializing in meaning in life and mindfulness here with another Meaningful Money Memo where we're going to talk about reframing and reframing for resilience. The power of reframing has been known for, for some time, but it's the idea that you can take the same situation and take a different perspective on it or, or just think about it a little bit differently and end up with positive transformation. And this is super powerful. Things as simple as hearing that the food that I'm eating is 90% lean is different from hearing that it's 10% fat, even though it's the same thing. Or if I was going under a treatment, a medical treatment, and I learned it had a 99.9% .9 chance of survival, or I had a 0.1% chance of death, that feels differently, even though it is the exact same thing. This is where we get glass half full and glass half empty thinking. We're taking the same situation and we're putting a different perspective on it. So when it comes to life, we are going to see problems. Problems are an inevitable part of life. And there's just no value to, to living life expecting a trouble-free or a problem-free existence because you know that there's going to be problems. Expecting otherwise sets you up for a life of disappointment. But if you can reframe those as a challenge or a problem that needs to be solved, it will greatly help your resilience muscle. Now, resilience is not about just sucking it up. Resilience is not about thinking that you just need to get walked all over or, or hoping that bad things happen. Resilience is in fact about getting better at feeling bad. Right? So it's not about wishing for no problems. It's not about never feeling bad all the time. It's just about getting better at feeling bad. And resilience is kind of like our psychological immune system. And what I mean by that is that if you think about your physical immune system, it's true that it helps you get better when you get sick. What it doesn't mean is that you'll never get sick. It just means that you get sick less often and when you do get sick, you get better faster. But you can't develop any immunity if you don't have any germs. You need the germs so that you can develop the immunity. And it's the same thing with the psychological immune system. If you don't have any practice solving problems, you can't get good at it. You can't be good at something without practice, which means you can't be good at resilience without practice. And there's a couple of ways to think about this. One is the unavoidable setbacks in life are kind of like a first arrow. First arrows happen all the time. And remember, if you expect a life where you're never going to get struck by an arrow, you're going to fall for what we might call second arrow problems, right? Ruminating and, and hoping and wishing for a life without first arrows is to give too much attention to the first arrow. So this is another way of saying that pain is inevitable. Pain is the first arrow. Suffering is optional. That's your choice. It's your relationship to the first arrow. So resilience is about eliminating the second arrow. So when we think about resilience, we can reframe life's challenges as a problem that life gave us. And so instead of hoping for a life of no problems, we're now learning from and getting better at dealing with life's negative problems. You get one life. Live intentionally.